Big news on the DIY front. I got myself a free welder. You'd be right to point out that this is really weak and it's a stick welder, which could make it harder to use, but I'm still excited. I've been wanting to get into welding for a while. I've done it once, that was maybe 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago at my friend Henry's house. It didn't go well and the stick welding especially didn't go well, but I was a different person then and YouTube wasn't as great of a resource. I did zero research. It was my friend trying to help me figure this out. He wasn't getting paid anything. Essentially, if this was an experiment, it would be, can a newbie welder use a really cheap stick welder to get any welds that are worthwhile? My hypothesis is yes. The perception seems to be that smaller welders aren't worth trying to use because they just don't have enough power and you can't get good welds out of them. That troubles me because to get into welding you have to start somewhere and if I need to spend 800 bucks to get a decent welder right off the bat, that's a huge barrier to entry. But evidence suggests that these can be used. Backstreet Mechanic actually did a series of videos using a similar welder and he talked about some strategies about how to get this thing to weld good welds. I actually haven't had a chance to try it out. I didn't notice it, but this uses a 20 amp plug. That's what this special little sideways plug on the ground is. This might draw more power than your average electrical appliance. Unfortunately, I don't have a 20 amp plug in my garage. I do have a 20 amp breaker and 12 gauge wire between the breaker and the outlets in the garage though. So all I have to do is change out one of the outlets. But I'm not an electrician, so we're not really gonna go over that. Instead, I'm just gonna magically change it out. Time to test it out. It runs. It worked, that's cool. That's pretty awesome, I don't even care. So obviously I need a ton of practice and I need a proper welding table, but that was enough success for me to see that this could really work. Very exciting. It's about a month later and I got myself something to weld on. It's a 16 by 20 piece of quarter inch steel. So let's attach some legs and turn this into a welding table. That'll work. It's ugly, but I was certainly able to keep an art going for quite a while there. So I guess next we try to weld two things together. <laughs> that looks really bad. Yeah, if you desire pretty welds, I'm not your guy right now. But again, I think that's my fault, not the machine's fault. One last test. 
We're gonna see how this does with 16 gauge metal. That is one ugly weld right there, but it worked. I'm feeling pretty confident that it's gonna be a fine machine, but I'm not gonna be able to figure that out for years, really. So, in the short term, one test we could do is to see if this welder can be used for at least one project. So let's see if we can make a measuring tape holder. Dang it. Well, at least I didn't waste time cutting those. It's time to look at the results. We've got some burn holes in the bottom. I actually tried to fix these and only made them worse. The corners are notched. I wasn't able to fill in where it started to melt away. And despite my efforts, this still didn't come out square. I really think most of the problems here were because of fitment. I just don't really have a great setup yet for cutting metal. I was also trying to do some bevels on the edges so that the puddle would sink into those spots and it would create a stronger joint, but there just wasn't enough metal left. I beveled it too much and it the weld just blew right through. I also didn't mean to break the corners, obviously. Maybe if I would have heated up the metal and bent it that way instead, it wouldn't have broken. The material might have been another problem. I was talking to David Finch at Fabtech this week, and he brought up how bed frame metal is often recycled from whatever, things like railroad track. So it's super hard, super brittle. While free, it's not the easiest stuff to weld with. I think if I get that stuff figured out, the next version of this will go much more smoothly. In any case, it's solid. It'll certainly hold a tape measure. So, is a welder like this a good option for a beginning welder? I did have fun, but I enjoyed the process of learning how to do this. If you were buying the welder to do a project on your daily driver car or something and you were under the gun, I could easily see how this would be a bad choice for you because for one, it was kind of hard and two, if you're working on scrap material, who cares if you blow through it? But as soon as you're working on something that's kind of nice or that you can't easily replace, and you blow a big hole in it and then you just keep making the hole bigger as you work, that's not gonna be a good time. 
But regardless of that, I could easily see this being handy around the house for fixing lawnmowers or welding a couple of things together or making some art or just having fun. In any case, I'll keep messing with this welder. We'll see how good I can get. If you have any welding tips or tricks for uh, working with smaller, weaker welders that you'd like to share, I'd welcome them in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about this stuff, I'll include some links in the description to all the various resources I used for research. Thanks for watching.